I'd like to do a quick walkthrough with you of Music 101, which is a college course in understanding music in a nutshell. It's specifically designed by me for piano players. It's not only Music 101, but it's Music 101 for piano players, because I found over the course of time that piano players need to know a whole bunch of stuff about music, and it's not necessarily taught in piano lessons. You have to get it in music theory classes and so on, so I've added uh, the theory and the knowledge that people need to have as pianist and uh, if you went to USC or UCLA or somewhere like that and took a course in uh, Music 101 it would not only cost a great deal but it would take uh, a lot of your time but here for 39 bucks you can get well look at that there's a table of contents you can look at all the subjects uh, and uh, there's 20 chapters to it and you can take your time you can do it you know as long take as long as you want but it doesn't really take that long to get through and get the get the idea of it so let's look at musical road signs number one this is about dynamics tempo fermatas repeats all those signs that happen in music aside from the notes themselves and here it gives the symbols pianissimo is very soft you know two p's one one p is soft medium soft medium loud loud very loud forzando suddenly loud crescendo and diminuendo, getting louder, getting softer, those kinds of things that piano players need to know in addition to the notes. And then a tempo marking such as andante, moderato, allegro, presto, and so on. Uh, this is page two of lesson one. It talks about repeat signs and codas and DC and DSs and so on. And then uh, Chapter 2 is Music Notes, the basics of musical notation, of pitch and duration. How long do you hold a note and why? And uh, how do you determine what a pitch is? And so there you have the different kinds of notes, whole, half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, and so on. Here it talks about ties and flags and uh, uh, triplets and glissandos and so on. How to tell the key of a song. You've got to know... You've got to know what the key of a song is, otherwise you'll be lost when you come to playing a song. In other words, if you don't know that in the key of D there's two sharps, you're going to be in big trouble. Or if you're in the key of E flat, you have to know not only what the three flats are, B, E, and A, but also what the primary chords are in the key of E flat and so on. So it covers that. And let's skip on down here. Just give you an idea of what it covers here. Uh, chapter 5 is what every piano player should know about brass musical instruments and it gives the various kinds of instruments and then what you need to know though if a trumpet player is playing uh, over your shoulder or you're playing with him he sees the same note that you do but it, it sounds different. It, it's gonna, if he plays a B flat and your B flat on the piano it's gonna sound like a C. And so this explains how brass instruments are transposing instruments and what you need to know about that. Uh, there's a full score, full orchestral score. Then what, what you need to know, what piano players need to know about string musical instruments, the different kinds of string instruments, viola, violin, cello, bass, and so on. And then uh, the strings, and then what every piano player should know about woodwinds. And they're transposing instruments as well, and so an e, a clarinet in B-flat is different than a sax in E-flat, for example. And you have to know, if you're a piano player, you have to be prepared because, again, they could not read off your piano music and make it sound right. So you either have to transpose or they have to have some separate music or something, and you need to know about that. And then uh, Chapter 8 is what every piano player should know about percussion instruments various kinds of per percussion instruments and this is their notation is it's not pitched of course it's not you know they're not playing an F or a B flat but it, but they're still uh, have to play in rhythm and so on so you're introduced to their kind of music you see it, just in a piano course you would never take you would never learn this kind of thing that you need to know to play with other instruments and then what is the difference between an orchestra and a band or an, a choir and an ensemble a combo what, what is all that stuff. How does it work? What does SATB mean? Well, it means soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, and you're going to run into that all the time. Uh, quite often music is written SATB. For example, if you pick up a hymn book 
it was never written for a piano player. It's written for SATB, so pianos, altos, altos, tenors, and basses, singers, in other words. And so what do you do as a piano player? Well, if you just play what's written, it sounds really lame. So you have to know how to translate that for the piano. Then chapter 10 talks about the difference between perfect pitch and relative pitch and how you can achieve one or the other. Uh, I'll just tell you right now, unless you have uh, the right kind of genes, you're not going to have perfect pitch. Uh, it's very, very rare, but you can develop good relative pitch. And uh, most musicians, most good, good musicians, all good musicians have relative pitch, and very few have perfect pitch, but some do. But it's more of a gift. It's like, uh, you know, being colorblind, okay? Uh, chapter 12 is what every piano player should know about transposing instruments, the instruments that are written in B-flat, the instruments that are written in E-flat, the instruments that are written in F, and it explains that. And again, here's a score with different... Here's what a piano player sees, here's what a bass player sees, but here's what a trumpet sees. You see, it's different. You're playing a D here, but the trumpet is playing an E, and the alto sax is playing an F sharp, and so on. So uh, you got to take all that into consideration. If you don't know that, you can get kind of lost. Uh, the basics of reading music, it'll probably be a review for you, but it covers ledger lines and sharps, flats, and natural, sixteenth notes, and so on. Uh, it talks about how to speed up sight reading. How do the keys on a piano correspond to the strings on a guitar? A lot of people wonder that. And here it shows the strings on a guitar and shows how it relates to a, uh, to a piano, to notes on the piano. And it says, if I already play guitar, can I catch on to piano playing faster than if I didn't? And the answer is, yeah, if you know chords, it sure does help. Because once you see that they're the same, of course, they sound different on each instrument, and they're, they're fingered differently, but you know, once you understand the theory behind them, you have a great advantage if you play the guitar and you're just taking up piano, or vice versa for that matter. This talks about scales, major scales, minor scales, modal, modal scale, whole tone scales, chromatic scales. They're all, uh, all different scales, and you need to know about them and how they work. Diminished scale, too. There it is. A Dorian scale, which is a mode. Then uh, chapter 18, what different kinds of chords are there? And it talks about all the major, minor, diminished, ninth, seventh, and so on. And what is a triad? What's an interval? What's a unison? What's a chord? What's an extended chord? All those terms that you hear in music are clarified for you. And get down to the last chapter. What are those funny symbols above a line of music? Chord symbols such as F minor 7th, G 7th, all these chord symbols that you see in here. The piano symbols are up here, the guitar symbols are there, but they're really saying the same thing. And they're, they're telling you what this melody, what harmony would support that melody. So uh, you'll learn a lot about that. So uh, an enormous amount of education is packed into one uh, e-book called Music 101, a college course in understanding music in a nutshell. I know you'll be delighted. So. I encourage you to order that and get started learning what most piano players don't know. So there you go.